Peter. Uh, originally, I wrote uh, the prayer, O Sacred Heart of Jesus, make my heart meek and humble like you, not like yours. But somehow it printed like yours. Doesn't make sense. Okay? We're talking to the heart, and the heart of God speaking to us, and we're asking the heart of Jesus Christ to make me meek and humble like you. said to them, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. For almost a week, the whole country has been mourning. And you, you drive on the freeway, highway, you see all the uh, I mean, car dealers and those businesses and they wherever you see the Texas flag or the uh, American flag, they lower down. And that's not everywhere. Uh, I, I, I think this happened around the country because of this uh, act of violence, this uh, senseless killing. And uh, we are warning. And every time, every, every time it happens, it keeps reminding us of what happened. morning since uh, it's 15 years already is it we're still morning I don't know when we're gonna stop because it continues it continues on the world is still morning and uh, Jesus listed one of his uh, beatitude in the constitution of the kingdom of heaven is blessed are the born those who mourn. And the country is mourning, we are mourning. And why is it? What's mourning? Is a the attitude of blessing. We need to ask ourselves. Since Jesus, since Jesus himself, he mourned also. What do we do when we mourn? Of course we mourn when uh, not the natural uh, thing to do is just we, we shed tears, a lot of tears. And we look at the tears Sometimes we want to change something or somebody. We use, normally we use force, action, reaction. That's the natural way. You know, we you know, use some force. And if it doesn't work, we use more force. And if it doesn't work, we use more force until it changes. And to the point that we have to discover ways to use the ultimate force of all, atomic bomb. You know, change your mind, I'll throw at you anything that I have so to show you that I'm more powerful than you. We throw that at people. First, you know, uh, as children, we grow up, we do fight, especially boys growing up, break bones, break all those things, fighting, throw punch. And then you get a little older, uh, the boys are not as good as uh, the girls, uh, the boys are not as good as girls in throwing words. Words are more powerful. It can destroy the whole country, the whole em uh, empire with words. It's a word. Useful words. And words move. And you can throw punch, throw rock, throw whatever uh, ammunition, bullets you throw at people, and you throw words. You break, you break people's heart, you break people's uh, mind, you break people's soul, or bones. People get hurt. When you get hurt, and we feel we win. We're number one. We win. And we, we even throw at God many things. Throughout the history of, of uh, humankind, we've done this. We have, human, humankind has, has uh, attempted many, many times to throw at God many things. And the attempt is to dethrone God. This is what happened. First one was uh, in the Garden of Eden, and then even after the Garden of Eden, uh, when Eve gave birth to Cain, and she said, "I just make another human being just like God, make Adam. I'm like God right now." And then after.
afterward, you see, he's thrown God by rather killing brother. And he's thrown God by uh, at the time of Noah. And then after that, he's not putting up the, the tower of Babel. Again and again throughout history of humankind, we just keep doing it. Throwing at God, and God is shedding tears, he's mourning. But there's a, a, um, a difference between God's tears and our tears. We can see tears, people shedding tears because somebody we love has gone, has taken away from us. It breaks our hearts. It hurts us. And when that happened, something hurts me, must hurt my family. For a human being, because we're, we have that fallen nature, the natural reaction is, I want justice. I want justice. I'm going to go after that person. I'm going to go after those people. I'm going to go after them. They did this to me. I'm going to do that to them. A hundredfold. That's the natural human reaction. Yes. So, isn't this, this is what we do. We mourn and we get up and we're out. We are not afraid of you. We have no fear of you. And we're going to go after you. And then we get them. And their children, you know, their parents, whoever, and their children, so that we get rid of their parents. And their children are going to come back. We are not afraid of you. We're going to get back at you. And the whole, almost like a whole generation has gone by since 1911. And uh, it doesn't stop because there's a vicious circle of violence. And you killed us, we kill you, and then your, you know, your children will kill us, and it just keep continuing on. And this has been going on throughout. You know, I mean, since so the beginning of time in the history of human humanity, uh, for the Chinese, uh, when the em and, you know, a new uh, emperor come to power, what he would do is this: uh, he would kill off nine generations of the previous empire. Like the Han dynasty, when it came to power, uh, the Ming dynasty, they would kill up the Ming dynasty for gener nine generations. That, I mean in the East, okay, for the Vietnamese, when the emperor comes in, and the new emperor got in, kill three generations, genocide, okay? They go after the dynasty, they are fruit, and to the end, they do that. And they cannot escape, and so many of the Chinese, they would run away, they escape, they went to Vietnam, Singapore, and we see Malaysia. Those are the children of the Ming Dynasty. They speak Cantonese. Nine generations. They still there, there's hatred. And you go to the Holy Land. Palestinians and Israelis are the same father as Abraham. How many generations are they go after each other? Because this is this is what we do. This is who we are, what we are as human beings. And we see a lot of you know, blood and tears and, and uh, death. It was kind of spreading all over the world. It did not stop. And so we, we look up into heaven and we look up and ask God, why, 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 why? why? And we blame God. Some people will say, I uh, have heard this. Uh, some of the kids came to me. You know, uh, she's in college and she's about to join the military, uh, maybe. And she said, why should we have religion now? Catholic born, okay? Great Korean born Catholic. And we just live as brothers and sisters and it's because of all these religions, we have all the violence. Get rid of all the religions, like John Lennon said. You know, in, in his song, Imagine, I imagine there's no religion. There will be no more because there's no religion. We go after ourselves, we hurt ourselves, and then we go after God, we're asking God, why do you do this to us? And attacking God. Many times we attempt to say, okay, there's no God, God is dead. And at the end of the 19th century, beginning of the first, uh, 20th century, and then <coughs> at the beginning of the 21st century, it's gonna continue for 21 centuries before attempting to do this to God. God is mourning. Now, that is the first kind of mourning because we lose our loved ones and we want justice 
But in other words, you know, the human being, we call it justice, but in fact, it is called vengeance. Why? Simply because there is no justice in this world, literally speaking. Okay? I'm going to give you the Catholic reason why there is no justice in this world. And as we meditate on the second heart of Jesus and how he mourned, how sorrowful his heart is. Okay? Now, suppose, suppose, okay, I kill somebody and then the government or you know, they, they, uh, they captured me, incarcerated me, put me to court and then sent me to death sentence me, uh, death penalty. Now, even in killing me, that would not, justice would not be served because the person is already dead. Killing me would not bring back that person. <coughs> justice means, you know, you have to pay back the life of that person. You can kill me, but my life, my death will not bring back the other person's life. There's no justice. Now, suppose I kill two people. Now, suppose, you know, doctors who slaughter babies, you know, every, every day in Harris County alone, this was in, in the 90s, uh, when I still work at Methodist, uh, Methodist Hospital uh, in 1994, 95, and, uh, the, the report was that every day 150 child is slaughtered every day due to abortion. If that doctor, you know, every day, uh, you know, he could kill three, four babies. Now, if he can die three times, it would not serve justice because he killed. So there is no justice even in hurting it, to hurt people. And I'm sorry, but the person is still hurting. So in this world, there is no justice. We can kill the, the evil person, or the terrorist, we can kill him. But still there won't be any justice. The people are already dead. We, we think we can stop it. No. That is our way, still the human way. It is still human way. So uh, we have to find and discover new technology, new weaponry, new things, just to always be a, a step faster or ahead of everybody else. And we have to grow stronger and better and be number one around the world. And that is the development of civilization and technology. Okay, the, 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 the Tower of Babel is about that. We build up, up, up. And we get together, we do that. So we can you know, reach God and get rid of God. But God said, okay, very simple. I just throw a virus into your mind and you speak and you don't understand each other. That's all. Just throw a virus, destroy it all. Now, God saw that. And he showed his justice, and his justice here is in the Blessed Sacrament, his Sacred Heart there. His Sacred Heart is a mournful heart, sorrowful heart, and in the Garden of, a, of a, a Gethsemane, which I went and visited there, I went there last year, and there at that, that rock, he sweat blood on it. The rock is still there. You go to Israel, go to uh, Jerusalem. And he told his disciples, my soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here. Keep watch with me. Now what is this mourning of God? What is this sorrow, sorrow of God? What is this? Once again, we return to the nature of God, the nature of Jesus Christ, the nature of God the Father. God is love. God is charity. And uh, for the past few days, I've been working with you, studying with you about the nature of God. Our God is not the, the, the God of the East of the Muslims. Okay? You understand that? Our God is not the God of Hindus. Our God is not the Buddha. Our God is not like any kind of God in the world. Okay? Our God has become a man. And he said, well, God is love. Deus caritas est. Our God is always the three, three B words, remember? Benevolence, 
benediction. This is a benediction and beneficial. Always goodwill, universal, always goodwill for all people. And always good words, blessing, benediction is a good word, always blessing and beneficial. Always doing good work okay, for us. Goodwill, good words, good, good words for us, or serving us. That is our God. So even when he, he mourns, he shed tears, and he, he sweat in you know, drops of blood, that is his love. You broke my heart, you hurt me, but still I refuse to do harm to you. No matter what, no matter what, you hurt me. Okay, you can break my bones, you can break, you can tear off my flesh, my skin. Okay, you betray me. Now, Jesus is a man, and he had to go through that fire, the furnace of the, uh, the, the desert to train himself, to control, to master himself, his body, and his, you know, because man has the evil will. If somebody hurt me, I will hurt back, right? So he had to train himself. He trained himself to the point that he always, whatever happened, you know, preparing himself when he come, when he came out to preach the kingdom of heaven, he will, will get hurt. He knew he's going to get hurt. And people will want to kill him. And the discipline is this, the refusal never to do harm. First, do no harm to anyone. That's the first thing. And the, the second discipline is the willingness and the readiness to suffer. Suffer. That is our God. All due to love. Now He loves. And when when you know this, human being, we have this. But when we love someone, and we keep giving and giving and giving all that we are, all that we have, all that we, we possess, everything. But we keep getting the rejection, being rejected again and again and again. They rejected us, and again to trouble, they get sick, they're about to die, we bring them back, <coughs> kill them, feed them, and uh, bring them back to normal, and they hurt again, betray again. This is the mourning of, of God. This is the tear of God. I love you so much, and I, I, I keep feeling you, and you come back, and you, you bite me again. Keep doing that. And I love you again, I give you back your life, and everything. And then you just keep betraying me. And he sees that. He, you know, Jesus saw that in the Garden of Gethsemane. So he said, my, my soul is sorrowful and we even to death. Now that kind of that kind of hurt because of his love. And the, uh, always the saint said that uh, love is not loved. Love himself is not loved. Love is not known. And I could not imagine, really, I could not imagine how can people live without the Holy Eucharist every day. It, it's like, it's crazy. How can we not you know, live without the Holy Eucharist or receiving Him every day? Because He is love and love is not love. Love is not known. And He's still sorrowful, but still here, waiting for us. All He needs is love. Just come, remain with Him. An hour, not, not too much, an hour with Him. The sorrow of God is salvation, our salvation. We know this. Um, you raise children, okay? all of us here, you know, our parents. When they are young, you can intimidate them. Okay? You can, uh, can teach them, instruct them, tell them what to do. But when they reach about uh, that 15 years old, uh, they enter into, they're entering into their that teenage year is so hard to teach, and they don't listen anymore. And then, uh, according to Santa Moses, he wrote uh, a treatise.
treaties on uh, I mean, uh, giving instruction to parents how to discipline your children. And many things very practical. He's a doctor of church. He's a bishop. He's a religious like I am. But he knows practically how to, how to teach children. He said, never, ever use your hand. And never, ever use your hand, you know, to discipline your child. Never strike them in the head or in the face and anywhere, even in their behind. Never ever use your hands because your hand is uh, part of your, your, your body. And if you hurt them with your hand, they will associate you with the hand. And they'll hate your hand, they'll hate you. Your hand is for embrace, okay? And if you have to do a uh, during this time, very, very uh, wise bishop said, if you have to, Use something else. Use something else. They will associate with something else. They will hate this thing. They will not hate this one. Bishop, doctor of the church, holy man. Okay? And people use, you know, and they use, you know, it's not good. And I even, I got, uh, when I was a, a little boy, I got a lot of uh, discipline. So it went from the behind to the head, whatever, <coughs> everything. But still, I love my father. I never used this, never. He raised, and up, and Very, very, very gentle. A lot of teaching there. But even when you use that discipline, the boy, the girl is still stubborn and doesn't want to listen. But remember, when once the mother just shed one tear, okay, one tear, everything changed. <laughs> you see the, the tear of the mother, and that's it. The mother keeps begging the mother, no, 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 no. And then, I don't want to hurt you, mom, so I have changed. The tear of God is a tear of love. It's not guns, weapons, stones, stick. It's just the tear of God. It's a tear of salvation. And this is blessed are the, the, the sorrowful or the, the, those who mourn. So why do we mourn? We mourn because just like Peter, when he denied Jesus, and Jesus told him beforehand, okay? Many times, and Peter said, you know, he swore, I will die for you. And here is the sword, I will die for you. And even used his sword to, sword to chop off the ears of Malchus, 